65 foot long and 2 inch wide crack in the Wanapum Dam in Washington State is raising concerns of a potential breach. Divers have reportedly looked at the crack from underwater and inspectors are trying to decipher if there is a threat of a potential breach. Authorities are trying to find a fix. Every precaution possible we consider it to be a serious issue. And so we're doing everything in our power right now to lower the level of water above Wanapum Dam um, within a certain tolerance to be able to alleviate some of the pressure on that spillway pier. Officials are monitoring the crack for any signs of movement, but the dam is apparently producing enough power to supply local customers. A few days ago, dam operators found a crack during a routine inspection on Wanapum Dam. On further examination, divers found the 60-foot crack underwater on the dam spillway. The dam is owned and operated by Grant County. Both county and federal officials are working on the problem. So far, the river has been lowered 20 feet to relieve pressure on the structure. Thomas Stredwick is the spokesman for Grant County Public Utility District. He says the lower pool is affecting power production, but homeowners won't be affected. The worst-case scenario is if the spillway was to topple, but Stredwick thinks that other sections of the dam would hold on and downstream communities should be safe. He says Columbia River Dam operators plan for events like this crack, but hope they never occur. Investigators expose how the state of Washington let the federal government and one of its Hanford contractors off the hook after inspectors found one broken law after another at the nuclear site. As King 5 Susanna Frame reports in her ongoing investigation, Hanford's Dirty Secrets, state inspectors pushed hard for serious penalties for the violations, but their managers ignored their advice, leaving some to ask, does the state have any teeth at Hanford? Right beside the Columbia River near Richland is the most contaminated site in the entire Western Hemisphere, the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. Years of production for the country's nuclear weapons program left such a long-term threat to environmental and human health here that Congress made two government agencies, the EPA and the Washington State Department of Ecology, the cops the site. It's their job to make sure the U.S. Department of Energy, which owns Hanford, is cleaning up the waste safely and legally. How serious does the state take that role as regulator and compliance officer out there? Well, very seriously. Maya Bellin is the director of the State Department of Ecology. She says the message to the federal government is clear. At Hanford, they must do better to protect the public and the environment. They need to step up the game and make sure that they're appropriately managing waste at this site. That sounds good, but we've obtained thousands of documents that show something different. Two years ago, when State Department of Ecology inspectors caught the federal government and one of its contractors breaking hazardous waste laws over and over, the state agency headquartered here in Lacey had the power to bring down the hammer on the federal government. But that didn't happen. The state investigation began here at this concrete box in 2012. The Fed's contractor, CH2M Hill, found radioactive liquid coming from the box that they assumed was holding only solid materials like gloves and masks. The liquid captured in plastic water jugs turned out to contain some of the worst of the worst at the site. Lab results showed PCBs and a lot more. Beryllium, lead, mercury, plutonium, and americium, cancer-causing toxins that leaked right into the ground. If you find that, what goes through your mind? That we got a problem. Wade Wagner is a retired Hanford radiation specialist. First thing I would do once I verified that kind of a level is to get away from it. But that leak was just the beginning. The investigation expanded well beyond the box, uncovering a system-wide host of other violations that the Department of Energy had been in trouble for before. The state inspectors found CH2M Hill didn't report the spill right away. They didn't do anything to stop it for three days. They didn't have equipment on hand to deal with the emergency. And worse, investigators found that aging container, which is one of more than 500 like it, holding toxic waste, sitting outside on gravel, illegally, rusting and falling apart. Three years before, the EPA discovered the exact same thing, that the Department of Energy was breaking state regulations, which do not allow storing waste in this area, unprotected boxes susceptible to spills and leaks. Three years later, and the feds hadn't made any changes, and at least one state lawmaker isn't happy about it. It's as if they're laughing at us. It's as if they have an attitude that they are the federal government, we are a mere state, 
and they're going to go on doing what they're doing. The state inspectors pushed hard for a tough penalty allowed under law, telling their bosses the violations are systemic and demonstrate a pattern, and that the Department of Energy can't prove it's capable, serious, or even interested in meeting minimum requirements. They strongly recommended a $1.26 million fine for behavior they thought worthy of one of the largest penalties ever assessed at Hanford. After all that, what did their boss of the Department of Ecology, John Price, and his boss, Jane Hedges, do? They ignored their own experts' advice and the state's own penalty policies. Just last month, they issued this agreement, a watered-down version of what the state investigators drafted, along with a fine that wasn't a million plus, but $15,000. 15000 is budget dust for these people. It's meaningless. It's pocket change. Senator Adam Klein got interested in this case and met with the governor and ecology leaders about it last year. He says agency managers assured him the state was taking this one seriously. I gotta tell you, I'm disappointed. When Klein saw the order and fine, he says he was astounded, saying the state let the feds off the hook once again. But at some point, if you don't whack them, they're going to have an attitude that continues exactly like what they got. They don't feel they need to respond to us because we've not whacked them. And this isn't an idiot. No, I think we are taking it very seriously. Director Bellin says the agreement seals the deal that the feds can't sue and drag the state into court and that a smaller fine is the best way to get action. Issuing a penalty simply to be punitive is not really a way to get behavioral change in terms of handling complicated hazardous chemical waste. We're trying to get behavior change and it's very clear with the Department of Energy that we want them to be successful in getting this work done and meet their obligations under state and federal law. Now it is possible that the feds will have to pay more than the $15,000 if the Department of Energy doesn't shape up and fix a set of problems they could pay more than $200,000 more down the line. Even so, we've spoken to several insiders in both the state and federal governments who say they're extremely disappointed. They were using the words like astounded and disgusted. Uh, they couldn't believe that the state gave this kind of, of uh, penalty. They think that the state uh, caved in federal pressure, which sends the wrong message to those running Hanford and they say to the public in general. It sure does appear like the state just issued a slap on the wrist, so how common is this? Unfortunately, the people who have really been involved with Hanford issues for a long time have complained about this a lot. And just last year, the EPA really hammered the state and said, you know, you're really not doing a great job out there. You don't have enough inspectors. Uh, you're not doing enough inspections. And when you do inspect, you give them advance warnings so they can make everything look good. So it sounds like there is some work to be done in that.